Well, I want to uh, just uh, draw your attention to uh, a few things uh, coming up this week. Uh, of course, uh, we're having a briefing on the 911 situation that happened uh, several weeks ago, so uh, you'll want to keep an eye on that tomorrow. And we're keeping a close wa watch on Safe Track Surge 6. Uh, as folks may know, the uh, county is pulling out all the stops on trying to uh, keep our residents aware of the options. I encourage people to check out um, MontgomeryCountyMD.gov backslash commute that lays out um, choices that commuters have available to them. The county is going to have ambassadors, quote unquote, at the Silver Spring and Tacoma Park stations to help uh, commuters with options, which is an extra step of kindness <laughs> and uh, hopefully will help uh, commuters find their way to work if they're uh, uh, not going to get on Metro. Obviously there's a problem in that area. So there is a new normal uh, for how we're dealing with this kind of crisis right now and uh, uh, we'll be looking very carefully to see uh, how what the effect is on our residents. Uh, apparently Virginia uh, made out better than they anticipated with the loss surges, we'll see how uh, Montgomery County uh, and Maryland do. Uh, and then uh, the third thing, uh, we're going to have a really busy fall. Uh, our next town hall meeting will be on September 14th and only. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, we had a really interesting town hall meeting, not that run by the council, but by the um, public safety folks with respect to uh, racial concerns in Germantown on uh, July 20th. We'll see if uh, those kinds of concerns continue to surface up and only. Uh, and then we have, um, have a number of land use related public hearings that should generate a lot of attention. We'll have a public hearing on what's called the subdivision sta staging policy on the 13th of September. That uh, addresses rules uh, associated with how we uh, uh, measure and pay for uh, uh, new infrastructure when new projects come through the pipeline. We'll be hearing from the community of Littonsville at the end of September with respect to the Littonsville sector plan that's been sent to us by the county planning board. And then in October, we anticipate having a public hearing on the Bethesda Master Plan, which has been getting a lot of attention. Uh, and we're uh, waiting to actually receive the Planning Board's plan before we schedule that. But uh, we anticipate that we'll be hearing from the community at the end of uh, sometime in um, October on that. We haven't scheduled that. So there's a lot on our plate. Uh, the council, though, is poised to um, go on break after tomorrow. So. Uh, we will, every, you can all have a little rest until we come back in September. So, so those are my, uh, my uh, the things I wanted you to be aware of. Okay, with regard to safe track, um, so you said this is a new normal. What exactly, which part were you referring to again? Dealing with um, improvements to, uh, and safety improvements to uh, Metro. I suspect uh, we're going to continue to see um, uh, Metro's Metro at work throughout the system on a pretty regular basis from now on as they uh, meet the challenge of keeping the system uh, safe for everyone. So how would you describe the state of the Metro system right now? Is it, is, is it safe or? It's under construction, I'd have to say. Okay, so like just safe, there's safe and then there's not safe. So like, is Metro becoming safe or just from your perspective, the fact that there, there's going to be 10 months of maintenance, what's your perception on all this that's happening? Well, I think it's critically needed and I think uh, that people are going to feel uh, uh, comfortable with the result, uh, certainly, I think it, uh, this whole situation uh, over the past year or two really has revealed some, some uh, 
a real absence, I think, of serious maintenance efforts by Metro. And uh, catch, up, catch up is hard to live with, and that's what the, co the community, the region's living with now. Hopefully, uh, they will be able to maintain their uh, appropriate level of effort when safe track is completed. Uh, once you finish uh, a major reconstruction project, a major rehabilitation project, the way they're uh, implementing one now, you, it really never stops. You, you, there's always something, and you have to keep maintaining a system of this size with the demand that it experiences. Okay, so once the project starts, they're, they're going to continue with their projects. Like, it's never going to go away. Right. Okay. I'm not suggesting that they're going to be shutting down stations, but I think major work will always be required. Okay. Um, you said people will feel comfortable with the result. How about the actual course of getting there? Uh, it's going to be—it's painful. It's painful for anyone who has to adjust their expectations of travel. Do you have any uh, words of solace for people who have to deal with the? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I hope people ha feel that they have good information about their options. It's best I can say at this point. We're doing all we can, and uh, but you know it's a big challenge, and they're they're working hard at. It. Doing all we can. Doing all we can. I just want to providing information as to options. What do you make of uh, the interruption in the emergency system that happened a few weeks ago? One. Uh, well, we're, we've all been uh, we're very concerned about that. Uh, the briefing should reveal uh, more with respect to this situation, and I'm pretty confident uh, uh, this council is going to be saying never again this sort of thing cannot be countenanced. Uh, we'll, we'll get more information about um, what exactly happened to their power supply, what exactly happened to their air conditioning unit, what um, they were in a, I think they're going to tell us they were in a relatively unique c circumstance and a confluence of unexpected occurrences occurred at the same time, I believe, but we'll hear, s hear the real story tomorrow. Do you think the county executive bears any responsibility for what happened? Well, this is an executive function, certainly, but uh, uh, I know that there's an independent audit going on, so we should feel we should get the results further results, I believe uh, that will be available in the fall. School starts at the end of the month. What are you already? <laughs> School hasn't stopped for the county council. <laughs> what are your impressions of Dr. Smith and the plan that he's unveiled and, and what are you expecting um, this school year to be like and what results do you want to see? Well, I, I, I think uh, uh, Mr. Smith certainly is going to have grace parade uh, uh, with everyone as the uh, school year begins. I, I find him uh, an impressive, knowledgeable, and thoughtful figure. Uh, I like <laughs> that he traveled around to schools like on the mail truck. Uh, which is a statement uh, that he's looking at the school system from the inside out. Uh, and I think that uh, his focus on, uh, on all children and particularly um, assumptions about how uh, kids should be uh, educated will uh, really bring Montgomery County real benefits. Uh, you know, the devil's in the details, of course, and we'll see more of that as, uh, as his plan rolls out and is implemented throughout Montgomery County. Thank you. And do you have any news on your collective bargaining bill? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, uh, we've had, uh, since we had our public hearing, we've had, uh, we've had, uh, I've met with the unions. So we've talked about, uh, uh, their concerns. We found an area of agreement. They all, everyone agrees they need more time. Uh, so it's nice to have that, uh, 
that point of uh, consensus. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. At this point, well, I'm not going to push it. Uh, 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 we'll let it sit over the, the rest of the summer and then see where it goes in the fall. Um, can I ask you an appropriate concept of a mental health report? Who is people open about uh, the need for, for a study composition report? Well, <laughs> if you talk to the uh, people who run uh, uh, corrections. They will tell you that they are performing mental health services on a serious, at a serious level. And, uh, and I think having a mental health court is uh, an innovation that's been used in other places. How exactly it works, uh, this would work, uh, would remain to be seen, I think. But I think the intention of acknowledging that a lot of the uh, difficulties in the community can arrive from mental health issues is a really important first step. Um, there's a hearing tomorrow on uh, signs in the right of way bill. Yeah. Um, and with the uh, you know, election coming up, it's a pretty relevant um, bill. What do you make of the bill at the position? <laughs> well, I, it, it was a reaction, I believe, to Mr. Trone's uh, domination of the landscape uh, with illegal signs. Uh, those of us who run for office in the past are well aware of the rules, which means you're not supposed to do that. Uh, uh, and you're supposed to ask for permission on private property and, uh, before you put signs out to begin with. Uh, the public right of way is uh, particularly appealing because you can do it quick and easy, and there you go. And you see that the challenge is um, that you see that with a lot of things realtors, school uh, shows, uh, and, and uh, the question is how can we best, best deal with uh, the mess that we sometimes encounter, the visual. Uh, discontinuity we encounter uh, by all the, the signage uh, in the right of way. I believe our options are all or nothing, and that's the challenge. We'll be hearing from all from uh, the rest of the folks who who use the public right of way periodically for really um, unremarkable uh, signs, uh, community groups, uh, small businesses, and the like who are, are going to raise their concerns. I'll, I'll, we'll see where this bill goes. I know Councilmember Leventhal said he's heard from constituencies that these signs are a nuisance. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that they, you know, business owners, nonprofits, that they need the space to advertise. Have, have you heard from your yeah. constituencies yeah. that these signs are a nuisance and that they need to be get rid of? Well, you know, the problem is whose signs? Everyone would agree that somebody's signs are a nuisance. <coughs> uh, periodically, there's a, uh, a, a real estate company that will plant, you know, 30 or 50 signs in the right of way over the course of a weekend. Uh, they're obligated to remove them, um, and I think largely they do. Uh, uh, Mr. Trone went over the top. We all feel in terms of how he used signs, uh, but. Uh, I don't know if that's a good enough, personally, I don't know if that's a good enough reason to say nobody else can have a sign in the public right away. Uh, we can't enforce this stuff, and that's the other challenge. We just don't have the, we're not going to spend the, on the ma money on the manpower that's required to continually remove this stuff and then charge the different uh, campaigns and businesses and the like. Uh, uh, so. It's not a good use of public dollars, if you ask me. So I, I don't think this, uh, we'll see how this bill uh, uh, evolves. Uh, I think it was a statement of frustration with one particular uh, uh, person. Any more questions about the Metro? Um, did you hear about the train that derailed on, on Friday, early Friday evening? I heard about it. Oh, okay. Um, so two trains, train cars came off the track at about 6.15 a.m. Um, as of Saturday, they didn't know what the cause of it was. What does that say to you about Metro safety and the need for maintenance? 
uh, the uh, maintenance efforts are clearly uh, absolutely necessary. Okay, the other question I had was um, one thing that Paul would have felt the general manager is proposing is to close much, so currently they're closing at midnight for safe track to allow us time mm -hmm. for maintenance. He's proposing to make that permanent, mm -hmm. and as um, local officials have mentioned, that might make things difficult for, say, late night restaurant workers. And, and right now, late night restaurant patrons. Uh, absolutely. It's a real uh, tightrope that Metro is going to be walking between uh, uh, maintenance, ensuring safety, and re dealing with the needs of a, of a large region that's increasingly dependent upon Metro. Uh, the challenge that they, uh, uh, that they have is the nature of how their tracks are laid out and uh, 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 the requirements of single tracking. So they're going to have to sort that out as we go forward. Do you have a position on whether or not? Well, they got to do both. I mean, they have to serve the needs of the community, and at the same time, they absolutely have to maintain uh, their maintenance, uh, address their maintenance needs on a, as I said, on a pretty m regular basis. And uh, we're gonna, they're gonna have to figure out a way for this to work. I think uh, what we're, we've been experiencing recently is the result of of not putting in the time necessary for maintenance. So they're going to have someone's going to have to uh, come up with a, a plan that we can all more or less grudgingly live with. Okay. Uh, one comment. Sorry, but trying to wrap up the manager question. But one thing that DC Councilmember Jack Evans has mentioned in terms of maintaining Metro is the need for a dedicated funding source. Would you be open to Montgomery County contributing, say, more to? Metro, if well, it's needed. well, the way it works is it's by the jurisdiction. So it's the state, it's the uh, uh, it's it's and it's subject to a compact, uh, which is uh, Maryland, um, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. One of the big outliers has been the role of the federal government and whether it contributes enough uh, to Metro, and for Montgomery County, and and certainly. Uh, uh, our issue with uh, the governor is how much money uh, can be allocated to serve this region uh, generally, um, both metro and our other transit and roadway needs. So we can't, uh, uh, that's the sort of thing we have to be careful about. But sure, a dedicated funding source has been on everybody's mind for years. Uh, the question okay. is getting the three jurisdictions to agree to that. Do you think that's possible? Well, hope uh, lives eternal. <laughs> With Surge 6 beginning today, what's your advice for Montgomery County riders? Uh, Surge 6 is go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov backslash commute, uh, and that's a, source, a resource uh, for commu commuters looking for options. Do you think there are enough options to get to where they need to go? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Uh, you know, there's no, uh, until we get to uh, personal drones, uh, I think they're gonna, we're gonna continue to f find uh, frustrated commuters. Hopefully, uh, uh, this will be, this is a somewhat slower time for, uh, for commuters in terms of vacation and the like. Uh, hopefully, there are enough options available in terms of bus service and the like that will ease the commute. Uh, hopefully, people are looking at options for, like is working from home or having different working hours that will ease their pain. Uh, hopefully, uh, everyone is considering um, new ways of being flexible about work and commuting. Uh, and maybe this will usher in a new era for this region as to how we travel, when we travel, and what choices we make. We can always hope there as well. Okay. Well, there, there is the third safe check, check that you were briefed on, and that's um, the shutdown in, in near Tacoma Park, which is going to affect the entire red line and cause lots and lots of crowding, and it's not during the summer. You thought about that? The next one. Yeah. Well, the not, yeah. I, this is the warm-up for that, so we'll see how it goes. No doubt we'll learn some lessons from this one, um, and hopefully uh, we will be in a, a reasonable position uh, to deal with this as we go forward. All the I know all the jurisdictions are looking at how each 
each of them is handling this internally uh, and externally because, uh, frankly, the slowdown in one area affects a slowdown throughout the whole system. How is the council a, um, going to set an example in terms of finding alternatives? How are council members going to set an example for the other residents or explain that it is a good idea to choose alternatives as public health members? Well, every so often, council members have ridden their bikes to work uh, and the like, but uh, because of uh, our community engagement, we don't have, um, we need to have a lot of flexibility in how we travel. Certainly cars. Uh, usually, yeah. If we're going to get, for those of us who are going to go to late night meetings here and there, it's, it's not easy to, uh, uh, to stick to one mode of transportation. Would Montgomery County's employees be able to telecommute? Yeah. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, rules with respect to that right now. Uh, there, uh, as, and we are encouraging uh, more of that. Thank you. Well, everybody have a great August. Uh, we'll see you in September. Thank you very much.